Chat Nigel. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. I look forward to this. Four years with Ford in India. That's quite a bit to tell you about what this opportunity is all about. Good, bad or ugly. And this could be my, fa my favorite time. <laughs> Which is being on the golf course. Which is being on the golf course. Or on the fairway with the business too. Well, yes, you can do a little bit of that around the place. Not so much in India as has occurred over other times in my life, but uh, great opportunities and this looks like a really good course. Indeed, so well, you spent most of your life growing up in Australia, is that where you picked up golf? That's where I picked up golf. Um, the competitive nature of, uh, of getting out there, regardless of what the score is, it's the others you're playing with and the handicap that goes with it, but it's always the battle, internal battle, which is the most uh, difficult one to win in golf. Oh, talking of battles, let's talk about the Indian market. What has Ford's experience been? I know you've been pretty uh, out there in the thick of competition is in India's rather attractive auto sector. But how has the journey been so far? Well, I'd like to uh, compare it a little bit to my golf. Uh, and that is a lot of enthusiasm <laughs> when we were very young in the piece in the country from sort of from 95 when we arrived through until very recently where you're working hard at it, but you don't achieve a necessarily fantastic outcome as far as the score is concerned. Okay. But building a brand, building our experience base, and then now getting to a point where we've really elevated our activities over the last four years. And the practice is paying results? And the practice is paying results, and our, our handicap has come down dramatically. We're now a serious player in the market. The FIGO has been a game changer for us as an organisation. We're sort of four times the volume as we were three years ago, and we spent a billion dollars getting her there and we're just investing another billion dollars up through Sanand in Gujarat to take us to another level again. What do you think has been the important move in the last couple of years that's helped Ford go from where it is to multiply it, uh, let's say 5x, 10x? Well, the, the critical thing is getting into where the volume sector was with, with the small car. Uh, and having that car recognised for the value that we have brought into the marketplace and the technology that it's got within it. Um, it's, it's hit more than a niche. Uh, it's hit uh, right at the heart of the market and we're delighted with the way it's being accepted. And we're changing the brand to say, it's okay to buy a Ford now. <laughs> it's okay to it's, buy it's a Ford. It's okay. <laughs> and that's a really important yeah. um, barrier to break through. Rather than being a niche player, it's okay to buy a Ford by uh, a lot, lot greater percentage of the population and we continue to grow that. But there's plenty of luck by chance for you. You've been travelling all your life with uh, Ford. It, it must have been a journey of cultures besides just, you know, selling cars, so to speak. I, absolutely. What, what I can't, what I'm most amazed at now is what I eat versus growing up in a very normal household in Adelaide in Australia where it was kind of meat and two or three veggies which was every day. So uh, you grew up in Adelaide? Yeah, I grew up in Adelaide. Well that's at least one place that India is extremely familiar with thanks to cricket. Very much so and it's been the, been the very happy hunting ground of uh, numerous Indians over the time. I have to say. So you were never cricket. interested in cricket, more oh, interested very much in so. golf? No, I was very interested in cricket. I, I tried to fit all the, the sporting opportunities into my life. I played Australian rules football in the winter, played cricket in the summer, and then with friends play socially for, for golf whenever the opportunity arose. Coming back to your own business story, which is, you know, currently, uh, your plate is full with a country like India. Now, give me a sense of the kind of bouquet of cars that you have out there today. And what are we expecting uh, that could be coming up over the next one year? Well, the, the really exciting time, I mean, we've got the... Uh, the, the Figo, the award-winning Figo, it's won more awards in a single year than any other product in the country and we're really proud of that. And we've got Fiesta Classic, um, Classic which has been around the place for a while and in a new guise and it's doing extremely well. The, the Endeavour which is a dominant product in the marketplace and it's just uh, won the JD Power Award for four years in a row for, de yeah. for dependability and, and durability, appeal, initial quality three different awards and the all new global fiesta which is just a fabulous vehicle it just really democratizes technology in the market and then we've got great new things coming uh, the eco sport in particular yes, which we showcased in january yeah. yes so the eco sport what will it offer people who are looking to buy and who is your target segment with it? 
a really good question in terms of targets. So it's moving into basically a new sector. It's the urban SUV category. So it's not the big, heavy, large, off-road vehicle. It allows you to really enjoy the urban environments and the immediate surround. There's a question that I wanted to ask you based on the EcoSport launch. Sure. In India today, well, two years ago, the small car was the buzz. The SUV is the new buzzword. Move over the small, get on to the big, and India's you know, burgeoning middle class is chasing the four-wheel drive or four-by-two drive and so on. What have you as an auto player seen is the reason for that trend? Well, I think it's, it's the opportunity for people now to explore more. Um, the Indian psych has always been <clears throat> very much around wanting to get great value. And I think what we get now is the opportunity for people to enjoy some of the, the luxuries. Yeah. Uh, more than just gadgets, but the luxuries in a vehicle. There's more people driving themselves, and some of this is being driven around the personal enjoyment rather than just using the vehicle to get from point A to B in the lowest cost you could possibly have and then enjoy your life. Now it's about actually enjoying your life in the vehicle and it being an extension so of your it, life. It, you, we're suddenly moving from what has been sort of the mass market to a high value market. Uh, is the business doing well too? You know, it's interesting for a customer to choose an SUV, sure. But uh, is the business of selling SUVs uh, getting closer to the business of selling small cars? I think as, as you bring the price and still increase the value, bring the price down and increase the value, then you're in the same sort of area as the smaller cars. Of course there is a, a small increase for moving into these categories and it's a matter of the degree of increase. Mm. There's no doubt that you know, the, the 10 to 20 lakh category vehicle has grown substantially in certain pockets only, not in broad terms, uh -huh. because the community hasn't seen the advantage of spending that extra money. All right, but there's not a yet. fantastic, exactly right, but there's fantastic offerings in around the 8 to 10 lakh. So, category. where do you see competition? Because, I mean, you know, for example, Mahindra's and their XUV has sort of taken everybody by surprise. I think they've done a great job. Yeah. Um, but we're not saying that we're going to be, our EcoSport is not an XUV. Um, no, it is something very different again. And it'll be at a very, very different price point. Someone's clearly taught you the right way to play golf. Huh? Someone's clearly taught you the right way if to I play golf. If I tell you who, you'll be impressed. I learned from Phil Mickelson's sister. Uh, right. I didn't know that she was a great golfer, but I'm she sure is she is. She is a fabulous golfer. Tina McKilson is um, actually, she's quite a name for herself in California. Okay. And she's training people. And on one of my recent trips there, I learned a few good tips from her, which is very helpful. Well, one of the ones that's very uh, clear is the way you've got a controlled and slow swing. <laughs> and it's so important. I don't control my swing. My swing is too fast. When you pick up golf, you know, what, what is the first lesson that that you were given? Ah, look, no. When I picked up golf, the first lesson was just hit the ball as far as you can. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and my grip was wrong and all the other aspects, but... I have not... a feeling that's the lesson they give to cricketers. Well, correct. And I also played cricket, so I played more cricket shots. Yeah. Because right? they then already just... have power in their muscle by then, and shoulders more importantly. And, and you see a lot of gr cricketers are quite good golfers. Yep. They certainly hit long golf ball. Because they're right All of India's former great. cricketers are making the money on the golf course now. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. You know, and they, they take that, that skill to be able to, to handle that, uh, that game perfectly well. But the, re the real test is the final, not the drive. I know. It's, it's you know, drive for show, putt for dough. Right? That's right. Drive for show, putt for dough. But uh, is that how you approach business too? For example, there are people who believe that the route to the green has to be via the fairway. There are others who believe the route to the green could be any. Which, which theory do you buy? Oh, I think if I watch enough good golf, those who stay on the fairway are, are often more consistent, but some of the great golfers, it's their ability to succeed under all circumstances, and so you've got to be good off the fairway as well as on the fairway. You can't just stay the safe path. You've got to take some risks, but you've got to take calculated risks as, as you go, and then you've got to make sure you follow all the way through, and that's where the customer comes in. The customer's like the fairway. He's like the green, all right? The marketing arena is like the fairway. Uh huh. Okay. Let's take your next shot. Nice shot. 
That was a lovely shot. Thank you. Finally getting ahead there. Closer to the plane. And it was straight, so I'm happy with that. That's always true. Good. <laughs> That's always okay. helpful. You know, before we take this short break, we're going to do a quick rapid fire with him. Normally we do two. Uh, this time we're going to actually get one in the middle. Not wait till the end of the show. So let's start with a quick rapid fire here with Nigel. Your favorite course? Kapalua Bay. Where's that? In Hawaii. In Hawaii. Can't get better. Where would you like to play in India? Uh, anywhere. Anywhere next. Don't mind. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite car? My very favorite car? Well, it has to be a Ford. All right. Um, and I would put it into, into the Mustang category. Uh, and my favorite outside is the Aston Martin. That's what my next question would have been. Yeah. Prefer the sand or the water? I would much prefer the sand. The water is just too attractive to the ball. Power fade or power draw? Uh, I think uh, for extra distance, power fade is what uh, gets in the pie. Hot dog or sandwich? Sandwich. Halfway house or bushes? Halfway house. Okay, you've done pretty well for yourself. Ford for life or you look for another auto company in the future? Ford for life. Thanks very much. What are the big challenges for companies like Ford here? You were earlier talking about the Sanand plant in Gujarat. What has made you go there and what are the sort of um, ambitions for that plant? What will it do to Ford's business in India? Well, it gives us the opportunity of more than doubling our business in terms of the scale. Um, another 240,000 units and uh, it will take our total engine capacity for the country up to over 600,000. Uh, a good portion of that will be export. So we're set, set up now not just for the local market but to be a small car hub and a hub for engine uh, okay. right throughout the region and elsewhere as far as where we'll ship high quality engines. And is that plan already sort of, uh, you know, has it uh, been set in motion to do the hub piece of India? Yes, we are. We're already exporting Figo to 34 countries. We'll be at 50 by the end of this year. That's an important part and an important statement about our capability yeah. and the acceptance of the product on a, on a world scale. Would it be fair to assume that today uh, Ford's manufacturing power in India is bigger than its retail power? They're, they're aligned. We, we, we've aligned to not put too much capacity in, into place. Um, we're building that. If anything, right at the moment, we are constrained on total availability of our products in the market, certainly with the Figo, because of uh, the constraints in the, in the overall planning and supply industry. That's, that's where it really comes to. Um, we're building that. You'll see a, a boost in our total output through the second half of this year, yeah. and then uh, let, it, let it rip next year. Tell me, how hard is it to deal with labor issues as a global company in India? Because we've seen lots happen to companies, you know, Honda, for example, has suffered now and then. And, you know, these things tend to crop up in small scale or large scale in different places. Oh, look, I think one of the great things about our company is that we have a memory. And we've, we've suffered all sorts of challenges and problems elsewhere in the world. And we try and bring the best of, of what we've learned through time. And we've had a tremendous relationship with our employees right throughout the, the country and in particular in Chennai for our um, assembly operations down there. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a workers' council, we meet regularly, and the team that has worked with them uh, have been able works? to achieve a great outcome. What do you think works for the Indian uh, labour unions? I mean, how, what, what's a good strategy to deal with them? I think it's, it's a global strategy, not just Indian, and that is communication. If you've got the right communication and you're prepared to listen, two ears, one mouth, right, and try and use them in those proportions with everybody, yeah. then you have a really good chance of building a relationship. And if you've got the relationship right, you can normally resolve most challenges. So part of the story around relationship has a lot to do with leadership itself. What is the one leadership motto that you live by? Uh, particularly in a market like India, four years here, what is that one mantra that you've lived by? Uh, you're only ever as good as your team. You're only as good as, good good as, as your, your team. team. You're only ever as good as your team. You can never, be, you can never do it on your own, and you're only as good as your team. And, and that's the most important aspect in life here. Not just here, but anywhere, it's my yeah. belief. Surely in, 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 in organizations, but when you're on the golf course, you're often playing against yourself. You're more or less a person all by yourself. Uh, that's something that brings calm or worry when you're playing? It has to bring calm eventually, but there are 
numerous times you go through the real challenges of, uh, of the fighting the devil within, exactly as you described. And once you get on top of that, then you have a really comfortable round of golf. Uh, yeah, but so that's the big challenge. Slow your swing down, take control. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Easy to say. <laughs> okay. You know, it's been such pleasure speaking to you, but like I promised my viewers, I have to go through the second rapid fire with you before we wrap this up. So it's time for the second round of the rapid fire. Let's start with the rapid fire. What's, uh, what could be your dream four ball? Oh, dream four ball? Um, it actually would be uh, three, of my, three of my closest friends because I just love golf and the enjoyment of it and especially competing against them. A hole in one or a round of life? A round of life. Hole in one's just a one time wonder. It's, it's not the way that you want to finish. Small car or an SUV? Ah, eco sport. <laughs> we'll give you both. <laughs> okay, mountains or the ocean? Ocean. Belly putter or an adjustable driver? Adjustable driver. So Neither really. <laughs> Long game or a short game? Long game brings a smile to your face, but uh, a really good short game gets you the score. So putt for do. Play, for, mon to... play for money or play for fun? Both. Both? Both. Okay. I can see you like to take the middle route and everything. Thanks well, so much. It's, it's not the middle route. It's you get fun out of both. Fun out of both. You get yeah. fun out of both. All yes. right. Enjoy that and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Good to have you. Thank you.